If you remember when we began in Lent, we gathered our Alleluia's. We took them away and we stopped saying Alleluia for 40 days. So please stand as we resurrect our Alleluia's. Join me in the resurrection of our Alleluia's. It's printed in your bulletin. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under, the, under heaven. There is a time to weep. But there is also a time to laugh, dance, and embrace, a time to build up, heal, and love, and a time to be born. In God's time, we find our hallelujah. We have kept watch by the tomb, and give thanks that the tomb is empty. The time has come. Christ is risen today. Let us celebrate. Please be seated. I guess. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth, the Lord is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. It's good to see each and every one of you this Easter morning. Uh, before we begin worship, I have a few announcements. I want to invite, where is he? Uh, there you are. Here, I'll let you come up first and give your announcement before I begin. Yes, that's fine. Good morning and happy Easter. Uh, just wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, Habitat for Humanity's Apostle Bill. Um, it started on the 14th of March and will last through May. Our church has signed up for April the 18th, 19th, and 20th. You can come one day, two days, or all three. Um, it's in the bulletin there if, if you have any questions. We need to register at the habitat, sandhillshabitat.org. Um, it is a, to me, it is a lot of fun. I'm classified as a hardcore volunteer, and so is Tim up in the back there. And that just means that we come on a regular basis to volunteer for Habitat. Uh, we have a lot of fun with the guys that we meet there, and uh, we, uh, we build a really good house. Uh, you, you, don't, you don't have to have any experience, no tools or anything to require. If you, if you want, you can bring a pair of gloves, but, but nothing's required. Everything's furnished. Um, Habitat, this branch of Habitat builds 12 houses a year. Um, and for those 12 houses, they get over 100 applications for those 12 houses. So the need is great. Um, and one of their publications, they sent out that one, one hour of volunteer work uh, equals $31 in savings to Habitat in labor costs. So please come. Uh, we're going to be paired with two smaller churches, uh, the Village Chapel in Pinehurst and Mount Sinai Baptist Church. So the three of our churches get together. We're trying to get 12 people, 12 volunteers each day. Uh, I went by the, uh, looked on the website this morning, and so far there, there are four or five um, already registered for each day. So we need a few more. Uh, I went by the build site. Um, Thursday and the walls are up. Uh, trusses might be up by the time we get there, but I'm not sure what we'll be doing on the 18th. But anyway, please come. Thank you. Thank you. 
I would also like to let you know that this Sunday we will be taking up our, um, our, a, an offering that we do. We take up this offering both at Christmas and in Easter. You'll find an envelope right in front of you um, if you would like to give to this particular ministry of the, of the Presbyterian Church. Um, you can put your offering in that envelope and when the offering plates are passed later on in the service, just add those envelopes into that particular, into the offering plate. Um, I believe that is all the announcement that, that we have today. So let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Please stand in body or in spirit for the call to worship printed in your bulletin. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen indeed. This is the good news we have received, in which we stand and by which we are saved. that Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again on the third day. Hallelujah, the Lord has risen indeed. He appeared to Peter and to the twelve and to many faithful witnesses. Hallelujah, the Lord has risen indeed. At last he came to us that we might come to believe and proclaim the good news to the world. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become Lord of life. From the waters of death, you raise us with him and renew your gift of life within us. Increase in our minds 
and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please remain standing for the opening hymn of praise, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, number 232 in your hymnal. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we, free from sin, might live for his righteousness. Please join me in the prayer of confession printed in your bulletins. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear 
bound by the ways that lead to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We are deaf to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to the calls for peace. We despise the weak and abuse the earth you made. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the joy of life, abundant, given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Please offer your silent prayers of confession. Amen. Hear the good news of God's promise. I will pour my spirit out on all flesh. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. As a forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer the peace of Christ to one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. And Pass the peace of Christ. Time with the children with Elizabeth. What's today? Easter. Easter. Yes. So, and what are we celebrating on Easter? I know. I'm going to explain the bunny in just a second. Yes. Maddox, what are we celebrating? Yes, Jesus died, but Jesus came back to life. And we use a really big word when we talk about that. What? Resurrection. Yeah. And resurrection... Yeah, so, so resurrection is a really big word that we use at church, and it means coming back to life, right? And so today, on Easter, we use lots of symbols to celebrate Easter. Can you all think of any symbols? Eggs, yeah. Flowers, absolutely. Lilies, yeah. Charlie. The cross. Come on, Chad, I'm right here. What? 
Yes, rabbits and bunnies. Yeah, Caroline. Yes, painting eggs blue. You did? That's awesome. Well, so a really lo wonderful church member owns this rabbit. And this rabbit tells us all about the symbols of Easter. And they let me borrow it. So if you'll give me just a second to get the microphone. Right, it's going to tell us all about the symbols of Easter. The true story of Easter can be found in all the wonderful symbols we use to celebrate this special holiday. The cross is the most familiar symbol. It represents Jesus coming back to life. The lamb represents the lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. The white Easter lily symbolizes the purity that came through the resurrection of Christ. And the chick breaking out of its shell is the symbol for the rebirth of Jesus. And the Easter Bunny is the symbol of new life during the spring season. Yes, Easter is truly a time to rejoice and celebrate because Jesus is the true reason for the season. Happy Easter. Hi. I hope everybody could hear that. <laughs> um, yeah, Maddox. Wait, what? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. What? The lamb. Yes, we didn't mention that. Lamb, like a baby sheep, right? So um, sometimes we call Jesus the lamb of God because in the Jewish culture, when they would sacrifice an animal, they often used lambs. And so Jesus took the place of that lamb, which is why we use that phrase. Our, our, our bunny did not mention one symbol of Easter that I wanted to make sure we looked at. So did everybody get a sticker that looks like this when you came in? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, so if you didn't get one, then there, we have plenty. Get it on your way out. It's a butterfly, right? And what happens to a butterfly? Is a butterfly born a butterfly? It's born a caterpillar. And then what happens? Yes, it, it spins a chrysalis or a cocoon and it goes inside. And we don't really understand exactly what happens inside. Yeah, it takes a while. And then it comes out and it's still the same caterpillar, right? But it can fly and now it looks like a butterfly, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. It does have to let the wings dry when it comes out. Absolutely. But the reason the butterfly is something we talk about on Easter is because it's kind of like Jesus. So Jesus went into the tomb, right? And then... When Jesus comes out of the tomb, he's still Jesus, but our stories tell us that he's glowing white. So there's something different about him, right? Plus, also, he already came back for the dead, which is pretty different from most of our life experiences, right? Yes. So what is this word that's on top of our butterfly sticker? Alleluia. So if you were here uh, six, seven weeks, seven weeks ago, six weeks ago, for the first Sunday of Lent, we did, we had y'all help with us and we picked up, we like pretended to pick up everyone's Alleluia, right? So because we don't say that word during Lent. And so today we get to say that word. We've already said it like 16 times at least and um, probably double that. But that's why y'all gave these out this morning before Easter because everybody gets their Alleluia's back today. That's okay. Yes. All right. So um, we've got the cross and the butterfly and the word Alleluia to help us celebrate today. I think we should close in prayer. How does that sound? All right. So we'll do a repeat after me prayer. I'll say a sentence and then everyone will repeat so we can pray together. Let us pray. Dear God, dear God, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you so much for Jesus. We 
are so glad that Jesus was brought back to life. We are so glad that Jesus was brought back to life. Thank you for making us new too. Thank you for making us new too. Help us tell others about you. Help us tell others about you and show them your love. And show them your love. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, with joy we celebrate the presence of your risen word. Enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit, so that we may proclaim the good news of eternal and abundant life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from Isaiah 25, verses 1 through 10. Hear the word of the Lord. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. You have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm, and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place. You subdued the heat with the shade of clouds, and the song of the ruthless was stilled. Over the mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. Though Moabites shall be trodden down in their place as straw is trodden down in a dung pit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Amen. Today's second scripture reading comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Hear now the word of the Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciple returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. We are witnesses to these things. The Messiah is risen from the dead. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our Lord, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Disbelief. Feeling the world itself and everything in it has shifted off balance. Nothing is in sync. Everything is off. You can't find your footing. Deep loss, sadness, grief, mourning. The loss of someone special. The loss of clarity and perhaps even the loss of faith. Loneliness. Emptiness. All of these things describe what it feels like when someone you love disappears, dies, is no longer in your grasp close by. And if we really try to place ourselves in this moment with the disciples and with Mary right after the crucifixion, we can probably get a good sense of what they are feeling. This feeling of tremendous loss. And so if we continue to imagine what that might have been like for them, it makes it a little easier for us to kind of imagine what it might feel like for them when the tomb might have been empty. It was almost like a double loss, complete emptiness. Not only is their Lord and Savior missing, but missing again. And they didn't, according to John, know what that meant. You know, when you lose someone, or when you're grieving, or when you're going through a tough time, be it health, 
or any life situation can drag on and on and on and, and the minutes just drag and the, and the seconds just drag on. Everything is magnified, sounds, people, experiences, everything brings up all these emotions within the person who's grieving or suffering. You know, we really don't know exactly anything that could have been going on in their minds. We can only guess. But what is interesting and what the text does tell us about this moment is that at the moment that Mary discovered that there was a missing body, that Jesus was gone, 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 she took off to tell all the other disciples, and they ran back to experience the same empty loss, the missing body of Christ, and they still didn't understand. You know, in that moment, we might assume that they believed in the resurrection immediately, but that's not the case. They interpreted that empty space as something very, very bad. They interpreted the missing body of Christ as just one more thing that had gone wrong in a long sequence of events as the Lord and God that they loved walked to his end at a cross. And they all went home, all except Mary. You know, it's interesting to me, when you're grieving, you want to stay close by the body of the person that you're grieving. It's interesting, why would she have stayed there? There was nobody there. There was nobody there, but yet she stayed in that space. The body was gone. And I think this is the first instance in this particular text where we experience a hint of the Holy Spirit. Something inside her said, stay here, he is here, stay here, do not leave, something. I don't think she realized that's what was happening, but something in her said, stay right here. As she remained at the tomb and Jesus' body was no longer there, it is also in interesting to me that the encounter she has with the gardener, she is unrecognizable. She doesn't know him for who he is. As Elizabeth shared, his body had been transformed into something else. It wasn't the tangible body that she knew on earth and loved so much. It looked very, very different. And as the story continues, you learn all over and over again as Jesus appears to the disciples and the twelve and all those on the road to Emmaus and even up in the room with the other disciples. He transcends all things. His body is transient. It can appear. It can disappear. It can change. It can do anything because it is spirit. You know, Hidden in this emptiness is the resurrection story. The human condition knows what it feels like to be hollow here. To suffer and believe you're completely alone. To be void of whatever it is that, that seems to take your life away. And yet, because of Christ, Hidden in this narrative, hidden in the emptiness of that tomb, the emptiness without a body, we discover God's beginning. In the beginning, God created. God created out of nothing, ex nihilo. The earth was formless, void, emptiness, nothing. To say that emptiness takes on space is to say that God is abundant in the emptiness. And you might be saying, what does that mean? Graham Ward writes this, the emptiness is emph emphasized in John's gospel by two angels that sit on either side of where the body had been. 
It is not emptiness as such. Rather, it is akin to a space opened by two angels on either side of the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy of Holies. Emptiness announces the plentitude of God's presence. The absence of Jesus' body means an abundance of God and hearts that long for Christ, the perfect inhabitant. You know, if we go through all of the story of the death and resurrection of Christ, it is interesting to me that what this story tells us is that when we are at our worst, when we think there is no hope, when we are at complete loss, we've lost someone we love, we think this is the end, God says it's not. God says it's absolutely not, that it is a beginning, that it's something even greater, and that, and that your emptiness, our emptiness, actually means great abundance of God. Have you ever felt like that? As though you were completely alone and you were so low you couldn't go any lower? Folks, in that moment, you are more holy and more filled with God than you can even imagine. God was with you more in that moment when you felt alone and abandoned than you can even imagine. The grandeur of the heavens and all the miracles of the world, which usually function to override our vulnerability, are not very impressive at all because they simply show us what the divine nature is to be. By definition, divine. What is impressive is the power of God to do something which is not human. Gregory of Nyssa writes of the analogy of a flame, fire, to demonstrate this, saying that, you know, it's lovely for a flame to be burning upward, but not very impressive. Now, seeing a flame burning in the opposite direction, downwards, that's a marvelous thing to behold. God turned the world upside down to bring beginnings to our ends. God weaves our lives together and fills our emptiness with holiness. And no matter how empty we believe our lives may be, our moments are how hopeless, God is always there. We may not recognize, but there, saying, whom are you looking for? He is not here. He is risen. My body was given to you. Remember me. Let us continue to remember Christ. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Let us now pray uh, our prayers of the people. God of life, journeys, we thank you for our emptiness. We thank you for uh, sending a son who would do the things that were impossible to bring us from the grave. We thank you for walking paths with us even when we didn't know you were there. We thank you for showing up at our table, showing up in our waiting rooms, in the hospitals, in phone calls with our friends, and in beloved prayers with loved ones. We thank you, God, for the power of the Holy Spirit that we do not understand and we cannot see, but we feel within us that moves and breathes you in this world and brings life out of all that is death, that turns chaos into order and hate into love. We are humbled, God, that you would do such a thing for us. We are just a breath, finite, and so many of us. Yet you know our story, you know our names, you know us from the day we were born, and you will know us until our last breath. God, we praise you that that last breath will not be our end at all, but that because of him, because of Christ, we will breathe again. God, we pray for this church and the church Catholic. We pray for all of those in need. And we pray that we become a resurrection people. 
embracing the joy befitting the life that you have in store for us. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name, Jesus who was born, lived, and died, and who lives with us again. Amen. Let us, um, let us now uh, prepare, a, gather our offering uh, and our tithes and the gifts of the earth. I ask the ushers to come forward. God, we thank you for the gifts that you have given us. We offer these back to your work in this world. We ask you to bless them, all that we have given, both in our efforts and all that was brought forward today. We pray this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Please remain standing for our middle hymn, Come Behold the Feast of Heaven, 511 in your hymn books.
seated. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In every time and every age, O God, it is good and faithful that we give you thanks, for your mercy is sure and your steadfast love endures forever. In your compassion, you gave us Christ Jesus, who set us free from death and leads us to life eternal. And so with all creation, with all the needy and hungry ones, with all those who have enough and plenty, with creatures large and small, with sun, moon, and stars, with the saints of every age, we praise you. Blessed are you, O God, creator of all things. By your power and love, you continue to deliver your people from bondage, thwart the designs of evil, show the way through the wilderness, Turn hardship into righteousness and reveal your hand upholding the just. Blessed are you, O Christ, servant of the universe. You came along among us to feed and heal and teach, to confound the haughty, to confuse the deceivers, to challenge the wrong-hearted, and in all these things, to give hope to those who long for peace. We give you thanks that the Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, took bread, and after giving thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Wherever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ, and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry with all people in every place. Give us who are fed at his hand grace to share our bread with the hungry and with the hungry of heart. Help us be faithful in service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in joy in an eternal realm through Christ, with Christ, in Christ. All glory and honor are yours. Almighty God, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Come to me and never be hungry or thirsty again. I invite the servers to come forward.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. You may come forward.
Let us pray. Here at this table, we celebrate resurrection as you feed us with bread and wine. And as much as we might prefer to stay here in this protected place, you send us back to our work. Only it is no longer the same work because we know that you are with us and in us, shaping and transforming us to be your witnesses in this world. Nourished in body, mind, and spirit, may all that we say and do give you all the glory. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our closing hymn, Thine is the Glory, number 238 in your hymn books. resurrection people. May you go out in joy and live with that joy. The blessing of the eternal triune God, Alpha and Omega, first and last, beginning and end, be with you all. Alleluia. Come, Lord Jesus. <laughs>